And this won't be super long, so go ahead and ask questions. So the idea here, um, I've been trying to break down for business owners what's the easiest way to build a system so that somebody can just follow the easy path. Writing copy is hard, so we have bullet points, but sometimes just writing or trying to write that 30 second, 30 second sales message when you're at a networking meeting, um, especially for David. David's about to do bigger things. He needs a story, not just for his book, but over and over again. The most all this that we're talking about is me based off a book called Story Brand, which you will hear, and I'll post a link up to make sure, because there's a couple that vary the words a little bit. Make sure you get the right one. Uh, but Story Brand is pretty much recommended by every single person who's ever read it on the planet. I've never heard a person say a bad thing about this book. Reading it though, and I only <laughs> been meaning it to read it, but then when Rayanne was reading it, I was like, okay, I do need to go read it. It does warn you. I will ruin every single movie you've ever watched. <laughs> Pretty much everyone. Rambo, ruined. Born Identity, ruined. Every love story, ruined. Um, and the reason is it just works. So if, if I've ever heard me tell you marketing, all oh, don't be Batman, be Robin. You know, be the supporting cast, be Jeeves. The, what, what is Batman Butler's name? Oh. Alfred. 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 Be Alfred. Be Q and Bond. So story brand is about building a story that resonates with actual people. That's how people have told their stories. Everything's been passed around. If you ever remember something from a brand, like you'll go shop at Chick-fil-A, there's a shop. You'll eat at Chick-fil-A because they have a story. There are people who will only go to Chick-fil-A because they like Chick-fil-A's story. Right, or not shop there. So the very first one is you have the person. This is going to be the protagonist in the story, and it's going to be your client. I can't spell client. Doesn't mean in there. Not you. We're not talking about you. Nobody cares about your awards. Nobody cares about high, how, how high up you are in the company, what kind of deals you've done. They only care about themselves because we're selfish creatures like that. That person has a problem. This is going to be the problem you're going to be solving. What is your product? What does your service solve, right? That person has this problem, right? Then they're gonna meet the mentor, the coach, whatever you wanna call it, AKA you. Does that make sense so far? And of course, that mentor helps them with this problem. And they're gonna take them down the journey. So whatever that journey or path is that they need to take, so think about Rambo has his mentor that taught him all that stuff about how to survive in the wilderness and he uses it to go through the journey. That person has a problem, meets you, and you take them through the journey and spur them to action. Yes, This is where a lot of like consultants are gonna get in trouble. <laughs> you can show your person the journey all day, you can give them the blueprint all day, you can give them the tools all day if you don't spur them to, act, to action, to buy, use your service. You sell items, right? You're like, what does that apply? If they buy all the tchotchkes in the world and they don't use them, then they're gonna think it's on you. That's obviously not the case, but that's what they're gonna blame, right? The whole reason to have the mentor is to skip failure. The mentor, the blueprint, spurring the action is to help them avoid failure. Of course, they're going to have mountains, right? They're going to have hiccups, potholes in the road, and all those things and challenges. The idea is that the mentor gets them through the journey, spurs them to action without failure, with as little as humanly possible, so they can find success. If you can tell your clients, that you're gonna come in, walk them through the journey, motivate them, motivation doesn't last very long, to help them avoid failure and show them how you can get them to achieve success, who wouldn't take that cost on? Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Like trying to think about how it applies to you and what you do? 
Right. So the part about the failure. Mm -hmm. it, Your clients especially. Yeah. One, they're already having a bad, remember, they're having a problem. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you deal in relationship coaching. Yeah. They know that problem, but even moving forward, something as small as having failure. But if you give them the right tools, the right blueprint, the right map, and spur them to action and make sure they stay motivated on the right direction, they can avoid that failure moving forward. Okay, so it's about avoiding, it's not about, it's inevitable. They kick you square in the teeth, right? Mm -hmm. If you're, ha I mean, there's no problem. If the world was easy, everyone would be millionaires with great relationships and super healthy, right? Mm -hmm. That's gonna happen. Yeah. But if you have somebody help you avoid the big failures or help keep you moving past that, or if you've ever heard any of the other marketing, like membership places, like, oh, I've failed with five different businesses and I was, you know, $250,000 in debt and this is how I move forward. Here are the 20 mistakes I made I'm gonna help you skip so you can make brand new ones, yeah. right? <laughs> Don't do this, yeah. but this worked. At least this way, if you mess up or you know something goes wrong, you're creating new ones, right? Yeah. You're skipping these 20 failures here right. and making your own new ones as you move forward. Hop and skip and jump. So yeah, failure is gonna be an issue everyone has to deal with up front who are motivated to move forward, right? You can't fix broken as much as you want to, but you can motivate, you can educate. Mm -hmm. um, so you, like I said, you deal in tchotchkes. You can show examples of where tchotchkes work. Right. Got a bag of them right there, not mine, but showing people different ways that they can use them. Like I could argue that one of the sales processes that we paid $2,000 for, they had us using stupid candy and then when I mailed everything out, I was like, at the end, that portion, so the rest of the process was brilliant. And I get the whole point of mailing the package probably had less to do with um, giving the client something they might use and more about just having a reason to call like, hey, I mailed you a package. But then I just felt really stupid. I was like, oh, I'm calling to let them know that there's some nerds on the way. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what if I mailed them a book? What if I mailed them, uh, I don't know, a mouse pad or what else? I got a Frisbee in there um, or a bag or something more substantial, depending obviously on how much that's worth or something that they're actually going to use. You could take that same sales process and be like, hey, you're, you, you know, you're, you could even go to that guy like, hey, you're telling them this. Let's try this with you. I'll get you the best rate on this. Just use my name or something. And let's do a test. Let's run the numbers and see which one did better. The one where you actually mailed them something with your name on it versus the one where you mail them a few nerds. Who cares about nerds? <laughs> that's not Christmas, that's a disappointment. Um, right. So any way that you can actually document and show where your product saved the day or did really well. Kind of. I get there's lots of people, you can't force them to do something. Yeah. But you can add value, you can educate, and you can motivate. Right. Well, and you said motivate, and you said that doesn't last for long? No. Yeah. There are so. people who go to Tony. Tony Robbins is one of those people who can motivate like no others. When you can motivate an entire stadium the size of American Airlines here in Dallas at the same time, like, I mean, motivating maybe one person at one time, that's one thing. To be able to do an entire stadium full of people, mm -hmm. that's impressive. Mm -hmm. How long does it last? sometimes a week at best, yeah. three days. That's what I was thinking. You go home, you get back into, you know, Life. modus operandi, and you move on. If you get like um, Doug Grady, he was like 40 days, do something for 40 days and you'll create that habit. What happens when summer hits mm -hmm. and you're out of your routine and you drop it like a hot potato? So one of the things that I'm learning is motivation only lasts so long. Motivation, when somebody has to stay up till midnight to get something done for a presentation at eight in the morning, gets old fast. Somebody has to be constantly motivated. That's why a football team has a coach morning, noon, and night. That's why they have like eight coaches in Texas, right? Mm -hmm. And now they're using apps. <laughs> yeah, so they really are in your Well, that's why, like we're world. doing the Kaivio, um, the My First 1000, 
And I just started thinking about all the different people who could use it. Like we're gonna be using it to replace our proposal software to help us productize our own offering because then that's one, that's one more software I can drop. But then it becomes more of a productized thing. But then on the back end, it's not just like, so there's Business Growth Network, that's a membership site, right? But even as start at just doing packages because people don't wanna to have to think so saying, here's your sales page, you have option A, B, and C. And then on the back end, there they go and say, says, there's a button that says, start here. And it says, here's the information I need from you. Here's what's gonna happen first. Here's the timeline for number two. Here's the timeline for number three. Here's how do you, if I do something for social media. So let's say someone pays us $200 a month for one post a day on Facebook. That's great, that's what everybody wants. Don't ask me why. I'd rather give them something for 300, and, uh, what do we say, we're pricing at $347 for the website and the CRM behind it with a lead magnet, but they won't pay $150 more for something that actually drives traffic, but they want social. The way to best leverage that though is to go every single day to your business and post it to some other networking group on your personal page or something. If I have a piece of education, a piece of motivation that reminds them to do, do that, mm. then that helps them use my product. So if they go in there and they're like, oh, well, you can't lead a horse to water, you can't make them do things. No, but if you constantly remind them, if I create an email that pings them every morning, hey, go do this real quick, hey, go do that. If I go and I do Facebook Lives to remind them, if I create the membership site that gives them other tools on how to use it, not only have I motivated them to use my product, that means I'll get less churn, and it means I also be able to turn them and get them to do, let's say, LinkedIn posting and Pinterest and Instagram and other ones, if they know how to use the first one. Mm -hmm. So no, you can't lead a horse to water. You can, you can lead them, you can't make them drink. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you provide the other reason, if you motivate them by giving them a story where they're Batman and they need to rise to the occasion, the chances of them better using that are better. Like even in Chopsky's, you can provide packages. Like I just kind of thought about that up there. You can say, here's the basic package that everyone should have. Here's the pen, the notepad, and the bag to send it in. So instead of, oh, well, what if I got this option or what if I got that option? Take options away. Give them a story, tell them how to use it, give them the roadmap, exactly what to say, like, here's your little baggie, go to a 30 second networking thing. Here's an outline for what to say. I actually have one if you wanted to borrow it. Say this, and if you would like a bag, bring me your business card and tell me how I can help you. And in the bag is a price sheet for that main package. Any other questions? I'm not that smart. Certainly you have questions. What did you say? I said, I'm not that smart. Somebody's got a question. Todd. Uh, I'm sorry, I was kind of listening. <laughs> and then I went to this other thing here. So I looked at the last two minutes. Um, no, um, it's, I don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> Any, David? No, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think that the, that is because that is the way you know you said it ruins a movie because if you if there's no movie you can watch and i'm a big movie fan, i love so, movies and, and and it is it's it's basically the journey on the failure part yeah you want to avoid failure but really failure is the need for the ongoing engagement i mean it's not only avoid but Failure is inevitable if you're pushing the limits of what anybody has to do, and that's what you always see throughout. Well, I think the big before one is the boy. ultimate success at the end of the movie. Yeah. Right. Before the ultimate success, there are massive failures. Massive failures, right? There are things where they're doing the right thing, mm -hmm. but together with the, the with protagonist, the mentor. with the mentor, they're going through, and they're 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 hitting the hitting the walls. They're they're adapting. They're doing it. So it's. It really is important. It's not a panacea. It's basically this is the way the story will play out. That part I think is just is avoiding as yeah. much as possible. Right. Like I had um a, we were at an event this weekend and my friend Claudia participated in one of these like fitness modeling things. Yeah. And she had done it once before, but she had you know still had some alcohol over there which has sugar in it. She'd still eaten occasionally carbs and stuff, and she didn't win. She didn't do enough leg days. So she hired a coach ongoing to help her to avoid those common traps to help her do better. She actually did too good. Right. She got too muscular. Oh, wow. How does that work? There's, 
there's always something. Won't even go into yeah, that. Failures are also opportunities. Right. But you have to have the ongoing engagement so the mentor can show you yes. that the failure is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And to help you keep a level head, cool head. Right. The idea is building a story to talk about, like when you think about an about section of your website, mm -hmm. right, or your brochure, or whatever you're telling someone about, write your story for your about section. Mm -hmm. Like make that a goal this week mm -hmm. to write your about section, but wrapped up, because this is literally just an algorithm. Al -ger I can't spell algorithm. So you get the word. It's a mathy question. <laughs> Uh, Got the wrong rhythm and algorithm, I spelled wrong. Thank goodness for autocorrect. The idea though is just a math equation. If every single movie can do this, every single business can do this, every single person can do this, this is where it's really easy to sound like the narcissist in your about section. Everyone's like, Ugh, I just, I don't I feel weird I'm talking about myself. That becomes less of a problem if you're not Batman. If you're letting the client be Batman and you're just Alfred, then they want to read it. You that story can be the inspiration to motivate them to action and take taking that journey with you. Good to go. Mm -hmm. So the story is about Alfred, not about you. You're Alfred. You're Alfred. Yeah. The story is about Batman. Yeah. No one cares about Alfred. <laughs> Without Batman, no one's buying a movie ticket. No one's buying a movie ticket to go see Q in Bond, right? <laughs> or even M. They're all letters, that's so crazy. Right. <laughs> They're all going to see it about Bond. So make your client Bond. Okay. I'm not the guru that's just making everyone be successful and look at my certifications and look how smart I am. The idea is say, here's my client, Batman, who I've helped build this business, build this little empire. Look how great they are. And me be in the back. I mean, that's always worked because I don't like being in the front. So it's just divert attention, attention away from you. Talk about them. Mm -hmm. That's a great framework to do it in though. So when you're talking, telling your story, talk about this person. So like when I wrote the one blog article from our own page that everyone liked, at the very beginning of it, the way it's written, it feels like I'm talking to a human being, to a person. So when people read it, I'm like, oh my God, I felt like you were talking directly to me. That's because they're Batman. I'm talking about <laughs> You know, you've been married 10 years, you know, things are rough, you've had some kids, everything was going good, then you've had kids and that stressed out existing issues that you may have been avoiding. Now you barely even talk to each other, someone leaves at 7 in the morning, the other person is staying home with the kids and the person gets home from work and is all bitter and what have you done all day and I've been at work, where's dinner woman? And you don't realize that you're, you know, you're not communicating, you're not really being together, you're not operating and then what do you do? You turn around and take it out on your children which stresses out those relationships, which then in turn like a vicious cyclone makes your relationship worse because your kids are suffering and then causing more problems. You have a problem, we're gonna step in, we're gonna give you a roadmap, a day by day, 60 day journey, where you can follow you know, one hour a day or you're gonna sit down and once a week, we're gonna get together and discuss how you're doing um, so that you can, we're gonna hold you accountable to make sure you take on a certain activity once a week so that you can avoid these six common failures and you can keep on going on with your marriage happily avoiding divorce. Of course you use better words than that. I just kind of like pulled that yeah, out and I obviously no, no, don't know great. what you do. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty close. But that, that's a good one for the about us. And once you have that, you can start framing every single story you have around that